Thanks very much. Thanks for turning up in such numbers today. And I want to particularly thank APAN. Uh, this week has a fortnight to go, but presuming it for, this year, sorry, has a fortnight to go. Uh, this conference feels like a fortnight to go. Um, but if, uh, if it goes as I suspect, it'll be the first year that I haven't been offered a free trip to Israel. Um, not the first year since I was elected to Parliament, but the first year since I was 18. Uh, and it's important just to get a sense of how organised the debate sometimes is. Uh, and important as well to understand the significance of what APAN made available for us uh, on this particular trip. I just want to give uh, one just moment I want to describe. I then want to talk about two ways to lose your house and then I want to say something about policy and where we head next. One moment I want to describe, uh, which will always stay with me because I'd seen moments like that in slightly different language in movies but I never thought I'd live through one going through a checkpoint where a member of the IDF pointed to a member of our group and said, are you Muslim? And when the person said yes, that person was taken out of the line. Um, Sky and I, Sky's here somewhere, um, stood aside as well on the basis that, well, if those were the rules, we weren't particularly interested in going past either. Um, ultimately, the person, the member of the IDF got on the phone and we all went through. Uh, but as a moment, mm -hmm. the simplicity of that, I think, spoke more loudly than almost anything else I saw. But there are two ways that people lose their homes, and this is all on the theme of what Susan Templeman said, where she related that anecdote of uh, being told uh, there is no system and it's working perfectly. So instead of what we often imagine in an oppressive place, where it's constant, constant attack, this is a situation of constant, constant uncertainty. So depending on the title of your home, the only technical right that is recognised to it being your home is physical possession of someone being there. So there's a series of homes now where families have to monitor and organise that someone will always physically be on the premises. Because the moment the premises are vacant, someone in a white shirt with a exposed firearm, very regularly uh, a, an immigrant from the United States or Russia, uh, will take possession of the home and at that moment it is no longer yours. But the other way people lose their homes is through demolition. And when we're talking about demolitions, they're nearly at the 50,000 mark in terms of demolition of homes. Um, now, once again, it's rarely entire suburbs, but it's that concept of uncertainty. So what will happen is a majority of houses in an area will get a demolition notice and then nothing will happen. One night after months or years, at about 2am, about 40 people will arrive with, with trucks and heavy vehicles and earth moving equipment. The family will be woken up, they'll be taken outside and then all their belongings will be removed from the house. One house will be demolished, and before sunrise, everybody's left again. You can imagine what that then does in the community of that person, why me, not why not them? And that concept of uncertainty. When I say, was this an anecdote? No, we met, we didn't just visit places and stand on the rubble where homes once stood. Uh, one of the people we had a cup of tea with, his home had been demolished two days before. And we sat on the neighbor's ledge uh, as we looked over what, until a few moments earlier, had been the home uh, of him and his family. Now, this conference is probably more full of negotiators than any other building in Australia, uh, and professional negotiators. What's been said about the settlements is critical, because, and you hear with the issues about the capital moving and all of this, the question is always, well, some issues were meant to be final resolutions. And what has been steadily happening is issues that were meant to be resolved in the final negotiation are already being taken one after the other by one side of that negotiation. Anyone here who has been involved in professional negotiations knows, knows the simplicity of this problem. What do you have to, to negotiate with if the person on the other side of the table 
already has all the things that they were bargaining for. And effectively, that's the reason that at this conference tomorrow, the question of recognition is something that a large number of us feel can be put off no longer. Beyond that, I'll save my words for the conference floor tomorrow.